preaching the gospel can be understood. Amen. For your people have come into your house, the very gate of heaven, claiming the blood of Christ to cover them. We recognize that we are sinners, Lord, and we need the washing of your Holy Spirit continually and daily. And in this time in which we live, we recognize that when many are thinking that there is peace ahead, we, won't, we recognize that, Lord, you have not designed peace. But a grand and awful time, a time of trouble greater than any man has ever known or ever could conceive. And that surely we need the mind of your Son to control our lives. You promised to transform us as long as we remain unreservedly surrendered to Thee. So, Lord, teach us, we pray. Magnify Yourself in this, Your house, and Your Son. In our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Even though we are going to be remaining in the subject of the fourth angel, before we take one more step in this message of the fourth angel, I have been impressed very intently that there are some things that must be added to this series that originally I was not going to put in. Because there has been much confusion and misrepresentation, and because there are so much misconceptions and confusion over the concerning the latter rain and the fourth angel's message, we will begin a short little series of three sermons ending with the fourth angel's message and the latter rain experience conclusion two sermons from now. Before we begin those as aspects, we're going to consider some critical points concerning the rain from heaven, both in the former and the latter rain. 
I want to admonish you that if you think you understand the former and latter rain, it's highly probable you don't understand it like you should. I've studied this for years and it's only in the last couple of weeks that I've been understanding it in a way that I've never understood it before. As a people, we as Seventh-day Adventists have been in such deep apostasy, we do not even know we're in apostasy. We geographically come out of something that we have identified as apostasy, but we still are in it in so many ways. And so as we begin today, this series will be actually in done in a way that will bring back to view the fourth angel's message in a way that will help us to clearly understand. Remember, the fourth angel lightens the world, but the latter rain comes in us. And so we need to understand both what's going on in us and what is going on around us. Uh, The latter rain, the former rain. Before we can understand the latter rain, we must understand the former. The latter rain has been poured out and been being poured out and has been being poured out since 1848. If this sounds strange to you, it's because this is the original faith of Adventism. <laughs> Though it has not been poured out in the great intensity that has been prophesied, it has still been poured out. It's been poured out effectively in those who are fit for the latter rain. God is not going to withhold the latter rain from individuals who are fit to receive it. All right. Christ Topic Lessons 121. <clears throat> These scenes are to be repeated with greater power. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, the former rain, but the latter rain will be what? More abundant. More abundant. <clears throat> Therefore, the latter rain is the Holy Spirit coming into the lives of God's people in great measure and with great power. Amen. Notice carefully an additional insight that needs our individual, personal attention. Review and Herald, March 2nd, 1897. We will come back to this quotation in its completeness in a little bit later in the day, in the, uh, day today. If we do not place ourselves in an attitude to receive both the former and the latter rain, what's going to happen? We shall lose our souls and the responsibility will lie where? At our own door. We will not have the right to blame God. We will not have the right to blame the minister or the church organization or anyone else. It will lay at our own individual door. Joel 2.23 Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter rain, in the first month. Without the former rain doing its work of purification, the latter rain will never come to do its work.
Let us understand. God is a God of order and He will not bring you in a second step if the first one hasn't been taken care of. Amen. Don't listen to a minister who says, oh, it's okay to sin and forgive and sin and forgive and sin and forgive all the way up to the latter rain and all of a sudden, poof, everything is okay and you won't sin no more. Review and Harold, again, we go back to March 2, 1897. The dispensation in which we are now living <coughs> is to be to those that ask. The dispensation of the Holy Spirit. We've all heard about we're living in the gospel dispensation. We were not living in the gospel dispensation. We are living in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit to those who are asking. Ask for His blessing. It is time we were more intense in our devotion. To us is committed the arduous but happy, glorious work of revealing Christ to those who are in darkness. Now, in just a couple minutes, we're going to find out who's in darkness. Don't be surprised if you might find yourself in darkness. That's a serious issue. Continuing, we are called to proclaim the special truths for this time. What are the special truths for this time? Present truth. What is the present truth for this time? We're in the Day of Atonement. In other words, the first, second, and third angel's messages is the present truth. As defined by who? God. God through who? The Holy Spirit. Using who? John. Us. The pioneer men. Confirmed by the prophet of God. talking last night with a, with a gentleman who was telling me that he had just gotten off the phone with a minister asking for help because his church was being under attack not once or twice but continually to the point of it tearing the church apart they were under the attack of the Davidian shepherd's rod the minister is in the general conference system and he doesn't accept fully the writings of the pioneers. He's only teaching Ellen White in the Bible. And he doesn't understand that because you are in apostasy teaching only Ellen White in the Bible that you cannot defend the original faith of the church. And therefore, because the amalgamation of the Greek Orthodox religion and the Adventist religion in the Shepherd's Rod movement, which this minister didn't know anything about, he had nothing to defend himself because Ellen White never addressed every point of our faith. She made it very clear that the pioneer men that God had chosen was to reveal every point in its entirety. And so as I was talking with this gentleman, I told him, I said, you need to call that man back right now. And you need to tell this man straightforward. And you need to get the 1897 Daniel and Revelation by Uriah Smith. You need to get... Seer of Patmos, the story of Daniel by S. Haskell, and you need to go to the church and say, we are going to study these books together, and we are going to defend the original faith of Seventh-day Adventists. Because if you are not serious with what God has established us as a, as a people, you might as well let the shepherd's rod have the whole church. Sure. Well, same place. Mm -hmm. 
He says, I think I better call him back just to make sure that he understands. Because the gentleman I was talking to, he didn't know all of the ins and outs and the history of the shepherd's rod, and that's why he called me. Now, I don't know everything, but I knew a little more than what he had. Praise the Lord. We need to, we need to understand. God has led us. And we can defend our faith. Amen. Amen. We've had shepherd's rod come into this church. Yeah. Not once, not twice, not three times, but many times. They do not return because they know we defend our faith, the original faith of Adventism, Amen. and reject their amalgamation of error. Continuing in the quotation. For all, go back, go for all this, the outpouring of the Spirit is what? Essential. Essential. Necessary. Unless you, you cannot understand the present truth message unless you have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the former rain. Amen. We should pray for it. The Lord expects us to ask Him. He sits there on the throne, the sovereign throne of the universe, and says, when are they going to ask me? We get so arrogant at Seventh Avenue. We got all the books. We got our Bibles. We got all of the red books. And so we don't need to ask the Holy Spirit to be poured out. God says he expects us to ask him. And the last sentence here, we have not been wholehearted in what? This work. This work of asking for the Holy Spirit. So now we must also be settled into the understanding that the Holy Spirit is brought into our lives through the application of the plan of redemption and the assimilation of it into our lives, practical living lives on this earth. See, without this experience, there will be no purging of sin from our lives. True. The purging of sin is accomplished in the former reign so that the latter reign can be of use in the vessels that we have right side up. Amen. They'll never be right side up without the former reign. <clears throat> Furthermore, without the latter reign poured into our souls, We'll never be able to do the work God has designed to be accomplished in the loudest cry of the gospel this world, this lost world of sin has ever heard. You think that the gospel has gone through as a loud cry with 3 ABN? With it is written, with voice of prophecy, with all of these ministries? No. It's hardly a whisper. We're going to understand more about the latter rain and the loud cry next Sabbath. But let me tell you, if we have not done our work with the former rain, and allow the, the latter rain to start coming in. When it is poured out in the intensity God is looking to pour it out in, we're going to be left behind. You see, it takes soul preparation now. Every promise is conditional. Review and Herald February 25th, 1890. She begins this paragraph by saying, when the churches become living, working churches. Wow. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Wow. What is the implication when the prophet of God says, when the churches become living, working churches, what does that say to you that was going on in 1890? 
That's right, Tim. It was a dead church, and it was a lazy church. And for the most part, that is correct. That's why the 1888 message was brought in two years earlier. Because it was a dead church. It was not a working church. And we have not made much progress from, man, from God's point of view. From man's point of view, yeah, we, got, we, got, we have a great working church. We've got all these hospitals. We've got all the educational systems going on. We've got churches everywhere. We're working. We got all the policies and evangelism going on. Yes, God, we're working. And God says, no, you're poor, blind, wretched, naked, and I'm going to spew you out. When the churches become living, working churches, the Holy Spirit will be given in answer to their sincere request then the truth of God's word will be regarded with new interest and will be explored as if it were a revelation just from the courts above. We take this word of God so lightly. We don't see it as the revelation that God wants it to be. Every declaration of inspiration concerning Christ will take hold of the inmost soul of those who love Him. Envy, jealousy, evil surmising will what? Cease. If you find yourself evil surmising, and if you don't know what evil surmising is, look it up and pray about it. Evil surmising causes a lot of area. The Bible will be regarded as a charter of heaven, from heaven. Its study will absorb the mind and its truths will feast the soul. The promises of God now repeated as if the soul had never tasted his love. It will then glow upon the altar of the heart and will fall in burning words from the lips of the messengers of God. They will then plead with souls with an earnestness that cannot be repulsed. The next sentence must shake you to the core. Before we turn to the next slide, I want to ask a question. Is this statement talking about before the latter rain falls or after? That is correct. Notice the next sentence. Then the windows of heaven will be open for the showers of the latter rain. The followers of Christ will be united in love. Do you take God's word as a charter from heaven? Do you do you have the intensity and desire to share God's truth, His present truth, to even the neighbor that you have no thought would have even a desire of Christ in them? Do you have a desire to preach and teach and share Jesus with everyone you meet? <clears throat> Because that all happens in the former rain. Then comes the latter rain. We cannot be satisfied with a church attending religion. 
Oh, I come to church, Pastor. I may not bring my tithes and offerings, but I come to church. If we identify ourselves from a church attendance standpoint, we are not going to be heaven focused, but man focused. Oh, I go over here because I like what he says better. You see, that's a church attendance religion. That's not heaven based. You see, when we come into this house of God, we must be coming to meet and hear from God's throne. And that we all are and have must be sincerely dedicated to the advancement of God's house. We need to be able to come to the point in our lives well, the welfare of God's house is more important than our own house. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about tithing. Tithing is something that you return because God says you need to return. You're acknowledging and you're, you're accepting God's authority when you return tithes. It's in the offerings. It's in the sustaining of the house of God that we acknowledge and return because we are thankful for the blessings He has given to us. See, far too often, even as historic Seventh-day Adventists, I fear we are still in a rut of church going and not assimilating the nature of Christ into our personal lives. In our profession, we can make ourselves feel really good, but in God's eyes, we are poor, blind, wretched, naked, above all, naked. Blind to our nakedness. Blind to the sin in us. Naked of God's remnant, re, remnant raiment that He has offered. Lost without hope of eternal life. What are the symptoms? Notice the prophet of God. Now, if you didn't bring your steel toes, if you didn't do your homework that I told you to do last week, you're going to hate me by the time I get done preaching. I'm just going to tell you that right now. But you're not going to hate me. You're going to hate the Lord. But you're going to hate me because I said it. Prophet of God, Manuscript Releases, Volume 9, page 212. The natural heart is not to bring its own tainted, corrupting principles into the work of God. We must remind ourselves what is the natural heart. The natural heart, it is the old man nature. Therefore, at any time we think to use as an excuse our old man as a manner in which we serve God, we are standing and we are on Satan's ground trying to do God's work. Continuing in the sentence. There must be no concealing of the principles of our faith. Every influence of the natural old man nature covers and distorts the principles of our faith, the principles of God. This must die in us. <coughs> Else the work of God will daily suffer and the loudest cry will never be given with this as our condition. The third angel's message 
is to be sounded by God's people. It is to swell to a loud cry. The Lord has appointed, has a time appointed when he will bind off the work. But when is that time? When the truth to be proclaimed for these last days shall go forth as a witness to how many nations? All nations. All nations. Then shall the end come. I have said this from almost day one of my ministry. The reason why Christ has not come is because it does never receive or see or heard the witness that God, Jesus himself, has predicted to be come. As Seventh-day Adventists, we have been preaching the three angels' messages, and it's so contrary to what God has given as the three angels' messages that we are not preaching the three angels' messages, and it is not the witness that God wants to give. That's right. This message of the fourth angel brings the first, second, and third angel's message into our lives so much that the mystery of godliness can be finished and the witness completed, and then he comes. Amen. Notice the next sentence. If the power of Satan can come into the very temple of God and manipulate things as he pleases, the time of preparation will be what? Prolonged. Prolonged. Notice this carefully. The prophet of God writes without holding back. The inspired tools of Satan are in the Seventh-day Adventist churches today. The power of Satan is the inspiration of our old natures. And we must understand it's our very own, in our very own soul temples that Satan can twist our thinking and manipulate as he desires. And this will prolong God's work here on this earth when we individually are not really serious but we can play a good church game you see the very work of the fourth angel brings power from heaven to those who are really right side up the very mystery of godliness finished in us so that we can be used in the final work of the gospel. Yet if we continually use excuses to brush away the very responsibilities God has placed before us, of removing every cultural weight inspired by Satan, every learned behavior in our lives, and trust me, God winks at our ignorance. But we have all learned well behaviors that are satanically inspired. What would be a learned behavior designed to destroy the power of God in man? One of the most powerful tools Satan uses today against Seventh-day Adventists is in the training done in the military, especially the Marines. Tim, our treasurer, before becoming a Christian, was trained and served as a Marine. I'm using him as an example. I asked him if I could. And yet he'd be the first one to tell you that the training is not of God. The slogan is real that Marines use. Once a Marine, always a Marine. The inbred behavior taught in the Marine Corps is not anything short of brainwashing. 
so that you become something you weren't before. That's right. Yeah. 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 It's ingrained to transform every Marine into a nature much worse than what he was born in sinful nature. They are transformed to be in a culture of human killing machines. One Marine told me, we were taught when you're surrounded and outnumbered, that's where we want to be. And that's where we are the best. This cultural mind of war with man's principles, it also must die in a true Christian. Because it's not of God. Yet sadly, many men and women of Seventh-day Adventist homes are going into the military, into the, into the Army, into the Air Force, the Navy, the Reserves, and yes, the Marines. And Satan is using this opportunity to manipulate the mind to if possible destroy the ability to serve God. But God has promised. Oh, thank you. God has promised. Amen. The work of the early reign. The work of conversion. I've seen it in Tim's life. When we began five years ago, it, I would say something that would it would it would hit a button. And it was like all Hades would break loose. That's true. That's true. And he's over there going, yeah, I know. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> but he used those things to help this preacher with his own character. But unless we have the full, complete work of the rain done in us, we'll never have our cup right side up. If we keep making excuses for getting our cup right side up because of our past, it'll never be right side up. We'll see the latter rain fall. We'll see the work of the latter rain being done, but we won't have it in us. Continuing in the quotation of Review and Herald, March 2, 1897. Notice what she says. At no point. Now, when she starts out with at no point, does that pick your ears up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is an absolute statement so don't argue with me if you want to have the audacity to argue with God go ahead mm -hmm. at no point in our experience can we dispense with the assistance of that which enables to make the first start right. The blessings received under the former reign are needful to us to the end. Amen. Don't think that you'll ever get to the point where I don't need that former reign any longer. The latter reign never dispenses with the former reign. It only intensifies and works with it. Amen. 
A connection with the divine agency every moment is essential to our progress. We may have had a measure of the Spirit of God, but by prayer and faith, we are continually to seek more of the Spirit. Amen. It will never see, never do to cease our efforts. If we do not progress, if we do not place ourselves in the attitude to receive both the former and the latter rain, we shall lose our souls and the responsibility will lie at our own door. Now you've got the context of everything I said. Do we get it yet? Is it clear enough? We can easily think we have even the former early reign of the Holy Spirit. But if our old learned sinful natures are never completely rejected, we'll never be right side up. Therefore, we will then never be in a position to receive the latter rain. It is in receiving the latter rain in our souls that will bring into our lives the ability with the power from heaven's throne to give and to serve in the last work. The last greatest work this universe will ever see with this sinful world still in existence. You see, no policy of man's devising will do this work. No. Or even have the minutest of positive influence in this work. I'll never forget 1972. For those of you who were in the church in 1972, which um, if there's more than three here that was in the church in 1972, I'll be surprised. How many was here in the church? We got four. I'm surprised. How many of you remember the General Conference policy of evangelism called Mission 72? Nobody but me. <laughs> Mission 72 was to be the last evangelistic work of the church. They proclaimed with this policy of this evangelism to be worldwide that it would be so effective that the Lord would come. Yeah, that's what they said. You see, no policy of men to finish the work. You can have Mission 72 clear through to 2072. It's God that's going to finish the work. With those that are fully surrendered to His work. Amen. No, I don't believe God's going to tear you. 2072. <laughs> don't anybody twist my mind, my words there. The work. The affliction of our souls must be done now in this present time. The afflicting of our souls is the destroying of every learned and born with nature of this sinful world. That it die. to the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything in this present time that is contrary to receiving the latter rain which has been promised to only those who have a heaven-born living experience in the three angels' messages must be removed so that we can experience this message in its fullness. 
This experience will be done. Its work of purging of the form in the former reign so effective that the latter reign may be real in us, lighting the whole earth with the glory of heaven. Jeremiah 5, 23 and onward we read in our scripture reading, but this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They have revolted and they're gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God. These people are so arrogant and so proud, they won't even fear the Lord. They give us the rain, the former and the latter. In his season, he reserveth unto us appointed the weeks of the harvest. God hath given us the former and latter rain to do a work in their own season. And we must not ask God to do it in the last season that he's designed to be done in the first. And this is why we must take the three angels' messages in their order in our lives personally today and daily. Verse 25 your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men. If you don't know what a wicked man is, a wicked man is when a minister says it's okay to throw your books of Ellen White in the trash mm -hmm. that all you need is the Bible. A wicked man is a man who stands in the desk and says you don't need the writings of the pioneers. You can throw them in the trash. A wicked man is someone who says it's okay to have the drums beating in my church, in the church that I serve. A wicked man uses hypnotic Reflections, the spiritual formation in his sermon so that the people have no idea what's being said. <clears throat> A wicked man destroys the principles of the faith, the original faith of Adventism, claiming to be an Adventist. They lay wait. As he that setteth snares. And they set a trap and they catch men. And as a cage full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. And therefore they become great and wax rich. You see. And the general conference system has 1.2 billion dollars on the top stock market in tithe. Their coffers are rich. Made rich in apostasy. Made rich in deceit. But it does not make it right. Let us review for a moment. You see, the majority of the Christian world has only a profession of that which God designs to be a living witness before us all, before everyone on this earth. Amen. Remember E.J. Wagner, Fathers of the Catholic Church, page 340. It should not be forgotten that a semi-Christian was one who professed Christianity and practiced paganism, or who melted pagan speculation into the semblance of Christianity. For generations, Seventh-day Adventists have been led into a profession without a felt need of urgency for the transformed life. Yeah. The whole fund foundational need of the 1888 message brought to the church through the work of Alonzo T. Jones and E.J. Wagner was the Seventh-day Adventist church had become essentially a works-based religion. Proof of one's right into heaven was based on the knowledge and deeds accomplished. Oh, I'm a great debater. I know the truth.
is sadly but true then and the vast majority today are still in the heirs of the fathers who rejected the messengers and the messages of God of present truth for they're still saying today look at what we have done individually and collectively look at the church the general conference church look at what we have done Notice what God's prophet said concerning the latter rain. Early writings, page 33. I saw that the God had children who did not see and keep the Sabbath. They have not rejected the light upon it. And at the commencement of the time of trouble, now, she's not talking about the great time of trouble here. She's talking about the little time of trouble. We're going to understand more about that next week. We were filled with the Holy Ghost as we went forth and proclaimed the Sabbath more fully. This enraged the churches and nominal Adventists as they could not refute the Sabbath truth. And at this time, God's chosen all saw clearly that we had the truth. And that they came out and endured the persecution with us. This is a prophetic statement, not a historical statement. In Ellen White's day, nominal Adventists were first-day Adventists who had rejected the Sabbath and the sanctuary messages and also Ellen White as a prophet of God. Today, it's unique in 2016 for the same things are going on. In the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, the nominal Adventist, that phrase, nominal Adventist, is directly and must be applied to the mainline General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, the structure, the corporate system in its entirety. You don't pick and choose. Why? It is because of the lightly regarding of the holiness of the Sabbath in speech by calling God's holy Sabbath Saturday, bringing pagan worship into God's holy blessed day, Amen. by the actions of merchandising on the Sabbath hours through promoting books and magazine sales in the sanctuary of God, collecting offering in the sanctuary of God, doing other business affairs in the sanctuary of God, eating at restaurants and institutional cafeterias on Sabbath. Bringing the worship atmosphere of the church services to the atmosphere of a social club with entertainment to bring the people in. Clearly identified by God's prophet as satanic in nature, the drums the swinging of the praise group, almost like a dance on the platform, all satanic in nature. All of this is makes these churches nominal Adventist. And I will not take it back. Rejecting the original faith and the liberalization of the key points of faith to become more acceptable with apostate Protestantism is making you nominal Adventist. And with this definition, listen to what the prophet of God says next in page 261 of early writings. I saw. Now when the prophet says I saw, who's the authority this is? God the Father, right? Amen. Let's not argue with this. I saw God has 
honest children among nominal Adventists and the fallen churches. Don't tell me nominal Adventists are Seventh-day Baptists. No. That's a fallen church. Seventh-day Church of God. Fallen church. It does include them. Why? Because they're fallen churches. They're not part of the fallen churches. They're part of nominal Adventists because they still believe in the advent of Christ. What's that? They're Adventists in name honor. That's correct. You have Messianic Jews that believe in the second coming of Christ. They're part of the nominal Adventists. But General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists is also part of nominal Adventism. They're all part of it. The fallen churches are the Baptists, the Methodists, the Episcopalian, the Protestant churches. They are the fallen churches. When did they fall? Prior to 1844. Let's get our facts straight. Let's understand the truths and know what we're talking about. Now get this. Next part of the sentence. And before the plagues shall be poured out. Uh oh. Ministers and people will be called out from these churches and will gladly receive the truth. In other words, God is calling people out of the general conference system. And God is saying if you're in the general conference system as a nominal Adventist, you will be taking part of the plagues. Amen. We must plead before the throne that those sincere, even in nominal Adventist churches, will be brought into the light of present truth and understand it clearly and take their stand. We must seek to be used in any way possible with anyone that we know that the, to be able to express as clearly as we can the danger of staying within these nominal churches which will receive the plagues just as the pagan and papal systems and the other apostate Protestants will receive the plagues that, comprom that comprise of the wicked of the world Notice this next slide because this is where she indirectly makes a clear definition of something. Satan knows this and before the loud cry of the third angel is given, he raises an excitement in those in these religious bodies that those who have rejected the truth may think God is with them. He hopes to deceive the honest and lead them to think that God is still working for the churches. But the light will shine and all who are honest will leave the fallen churches and take their stand with who? Remnant. Uh-oh. How many of us always been told the remnant is a Seventh-day Adventist church? What is the prophet saying? It's not. Wrong. <laughs> if you come out of the nominal Adventist church to stand with the remnant, puts things a little bit different of a light. Notice again clearly the prophet of God is linking nominal Adventist churches with coming out which is needed prior to the plagues. Yes. We have dealt with this in some aspects with the Ezekiel 8 and 9 series. Remember, the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists will try to function and claim to be God's church even 
up to the close of probation. They are destroyed after the close of probation. According to Ezekiel 8 and 9. According to the prophet of God. But they are useless. Their sentence has already been made. God has already identified where they stand. Their candlestick removed. The remnant of God is not the nominal churches of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and it never will be. As we close, early writings, page 111. Angels are watching over and guarding us. We often grieve these angels by indulging in trifling conversation, jesting, and joking. And also by sinking down into a careless, stupid state. Now, I'm not going to tell you what a stupid state is. I'll let you figure that out for yourself in your own personal life. Ask the Holy Spirit what a stupid state is for you. Do you want my definition of a stupid state? Do you really want my definition of a stupid state? <laughs> Playing video games by the hour is a stupid state. <laughs> Kids, when you're spending two and three hours playing a video game, you're in a stupid state. Parents, when we sit and watch movies or TV shows that we like, hour after hour after hour, with the excuse, well, I can't read, I can't study, I can't pray, I don't have anything else to do. You sat down into a stupid state. Because unless you actively create things for your mind, if you're watching TV more than seven minutes, your mind goes into a trance of a stupid state. And that includes video games. You do not have control of your mind after playing a video game more than seven minutes. Now, young people, you educate me and let me know if there's games, video games that are less than seven minutes long. I don't know. I, I really don't. So if you have some that you can play that only takes seven minutes or less, then have at it. <laughs> But I don't think very many of us really understand how short five minutes is. And my wife, she's always constantly trying to figure out how long four, five minutes can get. <laughs> Although we may now and then, now get this, we're talking about people that are in nominal Adventism. Although we may now and then make an effort for the victory and obtain it, yet if we do not keep it but sink down in the same careless, indifferent state, unable to endure temptations and resist the enemy, we do not endure the trial of our faith that is more precious than gold, we are not suffering for Christ's sake and glorifying, glorying in tribulation. Now, it is not going to be easy to be a present truth, original faith, Seventh day Adventist. It will be a struggle, it will be tiring, it will be exhausting physically, mentally, emotionally. You will plead for relief. It's 
So what's it going to be? What's your personal decision today? Are we going to be eternally serious about our living, our lives on this earth? Are we going to be satisfied with a life with church, a small part? Second rate in priority. Because whether you're coming here and church is just the second rate part of your priority, you're going to receive the plague just like everybody else. Right. See, have we applied into our lives by faith the work needed to receive the benefits of the former reign? Notice I didn't say the latter. No, you didn't. If you have not received the benefits of the former reign, the latter reign will never get to you. Right. Are we daily pleading that our old sinful natures that we've been born in sin with is brought down into death with Christ? Not by profession, but in reality. Are we seeking from the viewpoint of heaven's sovereign throne of our Father to be our guide, or are we just doing lip service? How shall I stand? Should be on our mind every day. How will you stand in that great day? Amen. Amen. I want my sins all washed away. Amen. Amen. Let us, with new vigor, participate actively in the former reign, daily, that we may have our lives right side up to receive the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the history of the world. Next week we understand what that latter rain is going to be doing for us and in us and through us. Let us come before his throne. Loving, merciful, and gracious Father. admonished us clearly and distinctly that our born sinful natures must die. Yes. That any learned behaviors of this world must die. That your son may be brought into our lives and that we may receive the mind of your son through the birthing experience of your Holy Spirit into us, fully and completely. Amen. Lord, for generations your people have skirted this subject. Help us to understand and apply it, not from any strength of our own, from the power of the omnipotent power of your throne that you've offered to make our wills omnipotent with thee. Amen. When we are fully and completely surrendered to your authority, this is our choice. We desire it to be a reality, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.